Hi, this is Walt Fritz from Foundation and Manual Therapy Seminars. You know, um, over the past couple of years, I've become a bit of a historian when it comes to uh, tracking down narratives, tracking down stories on how manual therapy works. <clears throat> and that's not just in the uh, in the manual therapy field as a whole, but in the laryngeal manipulation field as well. And now, uh, with a little bit of research, I was able to track down a citation, <clears throat> the first mention of laryngeal manipulation in the uh, in the voice literature, and that was 1990 from Arnold Aronson in his book, Clinical Voice Disorders. And in, in a paragraph, um, Arnold Aronson says basically that um, you have to be aggressive with laryngeal manipulation and laryngeal ma reposturing, because if you're not aggressive, the results don't last. And as someone who tries to look to, for, at the evidence for the work that I do as well as teach, I look for the reference for that site, for that mention that Aronson made in his, in his 1990 book, and there was none. It was basically Aronson was seemed to be stating his opinion or his experience that in order to create vocal cha changes, you have to aggressively, and those are his words, manipulate the muscle tension in order for it to reduce and for that reduction in tone to last. Um, what I found fascinating was as you start looking forward in the evidence from that point, um, you'll see references in future papers that were well referenced throughout, but, but referenced Aronson as being the person who says that you have to be aggressive. And in that future paper, they basically validated their work as, valid, as um, warranted from an aggression perspective because Aronson said it previously. But what I'm seeing is essentially an entire industry of fairly aggressive work um, was built, an entire industry was built on one unreferenced citation back in 1990. Now, I'm never going to question or doubt that aggressive manipulation of the laryngeal region, the hyoid region, etc., isn't effective. Um, but must it be aggressive? And why is it effective? Is it effective because we're locally reducing that tension, like the what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas perspective? Because we're manipulating the muscle, um, the tension is dropping and staying? Or are we engaging the human being who's feeling our touch, feeling the effect, feeling the relevance, and isn't that playing a big role? I, for years now, I've been using a more gentle, um, sustained type of hold. Some of might recognize it as a mild fascia release kind of hold. We're in, in rather than the manipulation, the quicker action, we're, we're stretching and holding. And although I no longer believe the stories that I was taught about what's happening to the fascia on the connective tissue locally, um, I do think that by holding a stretch in an area that my patient feels is relevant, it allows a lot of signaling from periphery to central to allow the patient to say, yeah, whatever Walt's doing right now, that feels useful, that feels familiar, that feels like it might be effective. Allowing the process to be instead about my skill in getting to the right muscle, getting to the right tissue, it's about our relationship that my patient and I build. And you know, again, your patient may feel you have to work aggressively in order to institute change, but I think we should be able to give them some options. Gentle movement can be effective if you like the manipulation model. Um, aggressive manipulation can be effective, especially if the patient truly feels that's what's gonna take to quote unquote break things up or to make things change. I'm always a proponent though of a slower, nuanced type of approach, one that doesn't keep making our patients hold on to their chair so we don't tear their larynx out when we, we manipulate the tissues locally. Lots of ways to help people with manual therapy. It's just I think we get stuck on old patterns and stuck on old beliefs and never really look to other options that are more patient-centered. If you have any questions, send me an email from waltfritz.com.